Billy Gray was my best friend and I fell in love with his mother. Love may be too strong a word, but I do not know a weaker one that will apply. All this happened half a century ago. I was 15 and Mrs. Gray was 35. Such things are easily said since words themselves have no shame and are never surprised. She might be living still. She would be, what, 83, 84? That is not a great age these days. What if I were to set off in search of her? That would be a quest. I should like to be in love again. I should like to fall in love again just once more. We could take a course of monkey gland injections, she and I, and be as we were 50 years ago, helpless in raptures. I wonder how things are with her, assuming she is still of this earth. She was so unhappy then, so unhappy she must have been, despite her valiant and unfailing cheeriness, and I dearly hope she did not continue so. What do I recall of her, here in these soft, pale days of the lapsing of the year? Images from the far past crowd in my head, and half the time I cannot tell whether they are memories or inventions. Not that there is much difference between the two, if indeed there is any difference at all. Some say that without realising it, we make it all up as we go along, embroidering and embellishing, and I'm inclined to credit it, for Madam Memory has a great and subtle dissembler. When I look back, all is flux, without beginning and flowing towards no end, or none that I shall experience except as a final full stop. The items of flotsam that I choose to salvage from the general wreckage, and what is life but a gradual shipwreck, may take on an aspect of inevitability when I put them on display in their glass showcases, but they are random, representative perhaps, perhaps compellingly so, but random nonetheless. There were for me two distinct initial manifestations of Mrs. Gray, years apart. The first woman may not have been she at all, may have been only an enunciation of her, so to speak, but it pleases me to think the two were one. April, of course. Remember what April was like when we were young, that sense of liquid rushing and the wind taking blue scoops out of the air and the birds beside themselves in the budding trees? I was ten or eleven. I had turned into the gates of the church of Mary, our mother immaculate, head down as usual, and the first presage I had of the woman on the bicycle was the fizzing of tires, a sound that seemed to me excitingly erotic when I was a boy, and does so even yet, I do not know why. The church stood on a rise, and when I looked up and saw her approaching with a steeple beetling at her back, it seemed thrillingly that she had come swooping down out of the sky at just that moment and what I had heard was not the sound of tires on the tarmac, but of rapid wings beating the air. She was almost upon me, freewheeling, leaning back relaxedly and steering with one hand. She wore a gabardine raincoat, the tails of it flapping behind to right and left of her like, yes, like wings, and a blue jumper over a blouse with a white collar. How clearly I see her. I must be making her up. I mean, I must be making up these details. Her skirt was wide and loose, and now, all at once, the spring wind caught it and lifted it, laying her bare all the way up to her waist. Ah, yes. <laughs>